Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Another week has come and gone, and that means another incredible Real Film Nerds Podcast. Hi, my name is Matt, one of the hosts of this incredible movie review podcast, The Real Film Nerds, this week for episode number 374 we talk about a child's movie rated PG and no, for those of you who are curious, I was not escorted off the property. So I consider this one a success. Mike, welcome to the podcast. Did you bring your children to watch this film? No, no, I did not bring my children to watch this film. Matt, is there something I don't know? Did you get escorted off the property? Uh, the last kids movie you watched? What, what happened? Well, parents just frown on me when I go to the film by myself and the theater's empty and there's one family in there and I walk in and I sit down like right next to them. I tend to get, it tends to get frowned upon. Okay. All right. All right. I think they think you're a creeper. Ah, I see. I see. You, you get the mustache. I do have a mustache. Yeah. But I also have the beard too. So maybe if it was just the mustache, it would have been worse or... Yeah, probably, if you just had the mustache. But, you know, in a theater that's completely empty, you could just sit somewhere else. Exactly, but why not fuck with people, Mike? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, all right. All right. I well, know, I'm a terrible person, I know. Well, uh, okay, all right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no, I did not take my kids to this movie, so... Um. I guess, Matt. Why not? Is it is it because you went on Thursday night late? I did go on Thursday night. Uh, Yeah, Thursday night evening. I wouldn't say late. It was like the 8 o'clock-ish round. Okay. Well, that's kind of late for children's. But yeah. So, well, Mike, we'll, we'll get into it. Um, we'll talk about it because I want to ask some questions, especially you being a father, um, a breeder, um, a bringer of new souls to this planet. That's a good one. I like that. Yeah. A bringer uh, of souls to the planet. A bringer's <laughs> bringer of new souls to, to the planet. All um, right. Anyways, Mike, so why don't you go ahead and break down John Krasinski's If? All right. Well, so like you stated, this was uh, directed and written by John Krasinski. This movie is starring uh, Kaylee Fleming, Ryan Reynolds, John Krasinski, and and uh, Fiona Shaw, uh, I guess uh, Steve Carell is a pretty big character in this as well. A young girl who goes through a difficult experience begins to see everyone's imaginary friends who have been left behind as their real-life friends have grown up. All right, Mike, so um, I don't know how much we can spoil or not spoil or whatever. I mean... It's kind of hard not to talk about this movie without spoiling like the biggest thing of all in it because that's how they open the goddamn movie, which is depressing as shit. But uh, honestly, this is why I'm curious to hear from you. I don't think this is a very good kids movie at all. No. No, it's not a kids movie. It's... I don't think the way that it was structured led it to be a kid's movie. And I'm not sure if that was the intent exactly. Like, we love John Krasinski, and he's done some pretty cool movies and stuff. But this was a, this, this was a miss. I'm not sure. I don't know. In my opinion, it was not really a kid's movie, and it was kind of just... It was rough. Mike, I agree with you. I I like I liked the film. I didn't hate the film. I didn't love the film. I liked it. I liked the concept. I liked some of the things that went on in it. But to tout it as a kids film is not did not work at all. And one of the reasons why I was asking if you brought your kids is because on my viewing, there were a bunch of kids there and they were so bored out of their minds. They were running around the theater. Yeah, my my theater, I guess this is an indication of how well it was going to do, was me. 
Wow. Only me. On opening night. Yep. In that's a big city. A, that's the first time that that has happened, I think, ever on go, on me going to a, a Thursday evening, um, a Thursday showing, really, of of a new movie. I have to say, that's very interesting. Because mine had quite a few people in it. Uh, granted, I didn't go to the late show. I went to the early show so I could go to i'm trying to remember what i did i think i went to a comedy show that night something like that i don't, I don't remember. know man. I you're went, a busy guy with many yeah. important things to do i got things to do man so i went and watched the movie and then i went downtown and i think it was a comedy show or i went and saw a band or something i don't remember but um anyway so i went to the five o'clock which is perfect kid territory and it, i don't want to say there was a lot of people in there but it was a decent crowd and all the kids were bored, man. I, I'm sorry, but John, this was a miss, dude. This was not not for kids. It was not a great film. I, I still liked it. I thought it was okay, but my mom really did not like it. And you'll hear her opinions later on in this podcast. But uh, yeah, I thought it was going to be sillier. I thought it was going to be funnier. I thought it was going to have more to do with Blue and the other imaginary friends. And I think... One of the things that didn't help it out is there's so many characters, you really don't dive deep into them at all. Even though they tout Blue and Blue's like the big centerpiece on the poster and he's in the trailer, he's still really not even in it that as much as you would think. And that was Blue's voiced by Steve Carell, by the way. Yeah, I, I think it was marketed excellent and it didn't deliver. And I think it just didn't really need that beginning stuff honestly like if that the beginning wasn't there i think you still could have worked it i think it would have been fine and it could have had the 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 other stuff i i don't know man i just feel like that beginning stuff was really harsh and really like whoa see even you mike are having a very difficult time talking about it without spoiling it but I mean that they open up the film with a very huge spoiler that sets the tone for the film right off the start and it basically is a swift kick in the nuts like right off the bat and you got a good 5 10 minutes of it I think maybe a little more yeah 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 for sure so I guess since we're having a hard time dancing around this Matt we we should just go um what are you drinking uh, this fine morning, evening, afternoon? <sighs> well, Mike, as you know, I am trying to slim down because things in life have not been super great for me. And so I've decided that I need to take a little bit more control of my health and my life. And I'm trying to watch my weight and trying to lose a bunch of it. So I don't know. We'll see if it happens. But, Mike, I'm drinking a 100-calorie pineapple white claw that has two carbs two grams of carbs so i think that's pretty healthy ish uh yeah i mean that's 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 the best empty calories you're gonna get matt like, yeah uh, i guess i could just drink straight bourbon which is what my other thing i was thinking about doing but i was like nah, i don't really feel like it it's a you know it's the start of the week probably not a good idea to start off with a high ball of uh bourbon but yeah, yeah. No, pro probably not. But um, I think if you're trying to lose for 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 uh, calorie purposes, clear is better than dark. Oh, when it comes to liquors, mm -hmm. is that why so many ladies drink vodka? I think so. Yes, makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. So, Mike, what IPA are you imbibing on this evening? So uh you know I'm sounding like a broken record again but uh got got some some uh 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 Cigar City High Lie again you know the one that's the 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 J A I uh yeah the the sport yeah yeah yeah, yeah the sport just just your normal IPA that I think that's probably my go to right now that one or the you know the Aldi uh IPA it's three weeks in a row for that one, so you're going to have to change it up and do three weeks in a row of Aldi next. Okay. Although I'm pretty sure that's what you did before this one. Yeah, so I will. I'll change it up. 
I'm gonna I, have to send you twenty bucks so you can get something different. <laughs> well, I, I get some things sometimes, but I, you know, I don't usually go out as much. So it's my wife usually just picks up stuff. So it's like you know, whatever, whatever she sees fit. Sometimes there's sales, so sometimes I get whatever's on sale. Got to hit up those sales, man. Definitely. So, all right, Mike, your favorite part of the podcast. Go ahead, reach into your pocket, pull it out, because I know you carry it with you. Mike, what is this week's just incredible dad joke? I got dad jokes. I don't think they understand, though. Gotta think I'm funny. Other people never laugh, though. Dad jokes. All right, Matt. This one's pretty cheesy, so I think you would like it. Yesterday, I ate a clock. It was very time-consuming, especially when I went back for seconds. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's that's definitely like a dad joke, but it, I, it's like a dad statement. But yes, <laughs> that's that is super cheesy and perfect. That fits your personality so well, Mike. Yeah, you have math, you have time, you have a dad joke. I mean, dude, it's not going to get better. Yeah, no, I loved it, loved it. All right. Matt, do I have one more thing I need to talk about? You do, and it's probably not very difficult at all, but Mike, I will ask it anyways. Mike, how does the Incredible Child's film, if, relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? All right, Matt, so... Obviously, I could have used Ryan Reynolds being the Deadpool and, and the new merging MCU stuff, but I decided not to. Oh, uh-oh. All right. Here we go. So so I thought I would use somebody else. And uh, the composer for this movie, uh, Michael Giacchino, also was the composer for Thor Love and Thunder. There you go. I was trying to see if one of the other celebrities was in a Marvel film. I can't think of one off the top of my head, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I kind of I, I looked around a little bit, and no, it wasn't really anybody. And also, I found out, Matt, and I don't even think I knew this. Louis Gossip Jr. died. Oh, I didn't know he died. When did he yeah. pass away? Uh, I think this year. Like, oh, uh, man. he was, he, he was one of the voice characters in this movie. I don't he know was, this... he was the voice for the teddy bear. Yeah. I don't know if, uh, if he made, like, if this was his last movie or not, but yeah, he, he died March 29th, 2024, 87. Jeez, dude. Not long ago at all. Let's see. Um, I want to go to his IMDb. And it does look like that is his last film that has come out, but there's a bunch of stuff in post-production. Like, there's 10 things in post-production. Wow. And I'm not sure what those are. So, wow. anyways. So, I'm going to go, maybe it was his last film, and the rest of these are documentaries, maybe? I don't know. I don't I, know. Honestly, I don't know. You know what? It looks like a television show, maybe. I don't know. We'll find out in the future, Mike. We will find out in the future here on the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Episode 374. There you go. I had to look it up. Sorry. Yep. Gotcha. So, okay. So, spoil, Mike. We're go we're in spoilers. <laughs> Ready, set, go. All right. This movie started out horribly. It's too, too depressing. It's too depressing. You can't show, like, the mom montage of cancer and stuff. That was rough, dude. Yeah, how do you start out a film by killing the main character's mom? I mean, seriously, that was just horrible, dude. Absolutely horrible. It set the tone for the rest of the film, and that tone was not good. It was very – it's hard to come back up from something so terrible. I mean, the death of a parent is awful. It's probably not – well, I don't know. I don't want to compare deaths, but it's – Probably one of the most horrific things you can think of. Yeah, dude, it was it was really rough. Me being a parent now, like seeing stuff like that is a lot harder, especially with like young kids. You know, I have young kids. So it was like 
And then he's sick, and we never find out what he has a problem with. Like, something to do with his heart, but, like, why is he in the hospital for so long? Like, what what was that? Yeah, that was really weird. And how they, he was there for, like, two or three days before surgery, and then he was there for surgery, and then after surgery. It was, and I hated how they made it, of course they did this, made it seem like he died. That really fucking... I'm like, really? You're going to kick us in the nuts again? Yeah, I... I don't know. And then I kind of did see the, the... the Well, I don't know. Should we... I kind of saw the writing on the wall with the... The, the various characters for the, the imaginary friends. With Ryan Reynolds' character specifically, oh, like who he was, yeah, no, yeah. I guess that shit about halfway through, yeah, yeah. But um, when she unveiled like her character and all that other stuff, I was like, oh, that's what it is. Yeah, it made sense. Yeah, but uh, I, I don't know, man. Like, there were aspects like a lot of the imaginary friend stuff was cool and like it was neat and like there were aspects of this movie that were great, but it just started off so like. I don't know, like like Bambi, you know, just fucking murder and like just just rough. Yeah, it was it was rough, dude. And but like I said, um the the imaginary friends were really a lot of fun. Um I wish they would have dived more into that. And I wish they would have had more about the characters and what they did or did not do. Uh I wish it was funnier, I wish it was sillier and you know, they really touted Blue as like this main character and he almost like falls off for a large chunk of the film. Yeah, he's in there in the beginning. And then he's gone like the second act, I think he's not in at all. Like I think he's just gone. And then he's back in the third to kind of wrap it all up and it just I don't know, he, dude, overall this movie I didn't hate it. It was just okay. And I I don't know. I was telling people on the radio, I don't think this is worth, you know, rushing out to the theaters. But, Mike, did you look at the box office numbers? Yeah, it didn't do very well. It didn't? Okay. I, like, I was um, curious. I think it won the box office, but it was uh, a, a lot lesser showing than they expected. They expected about $40 million and I think it got like 30 something and after the initial run of a movie, there tends to be, you know, like a 50% or so drop off and they're thinking this one's going to drop off even worse. Cause it's just, it doesn't have the greatest, uh, reviews. Yeah. So it opened, it was number one, man. It was 35 million, but uh, a surprise, uh, was <clears throat> the strangers chapter one, which is probably what we should have seen. Um, so this is kind of like a, prequel to the strangers that came out in like 2008 i think was the original one we we reviewed that on our um our harvest horror fest oh we um, did yeah we did yeah yeah I, was that our very first harvest horror fest i don't know but it, it, i remember reviewing it um it's a really disturbing movie like the first one um man that one starts out rough but i mean that goes with the movie right it's a horror <laughs> but, movie it's expected yeah yeah, but th this apparently is a trilogy or whatever, and it made it was third place. It made twelve million dollars, and apparently it only cost eight. So they're already in the black. Nice man. Well, good for them. Is that a eight twenty four? Uh, Lionsgate. Lionsgate. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. They, well, they, dude, maybe we should have. I mean, I just felt like if you know Ryan Reynolds, John Krasinski. Oh, yeah. No. I no. I'm with you, dude. And then Kingdom of the Planet Apes, which I, I think I liked a little bit more than you, or I know I did. Yeah, you did. Um, it was number two with $26 million, so it's still holding pretty decent. And I think it's made all of its money internationally. It's made a ton of money, so I think I think it's good. Like, I think they're, they're happy. Yeah, no, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, I mean, people love that stuff, and they're still turning out. I don't know. It just wasn't, it wasn't my thing. Maybe if I saw the new trilogy, I'd probably have more respect for it maybe i don't know it just wasn't my thing um but people love it that's why it's doing so well yeah and the fall guy man our our favorite movie of the summer 
uh, number four with eight point four million. So anyway. good. It's still still not, it's not turning and burning, but it's still making money at least. Yeah. Well, we loved it. Mags loved it. So I I think everyone who's seen it has loved it. It's just nobody's going to see it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're mad at you know Ryan Gosling. I don't know. Yeah, just Ken. Because he's just Ken. And and Barbara Heimer is together. They can't be together. Yeah, no. So, well, all right, Mike, what else do you want to talk about if? I mean, I don't know what else we can really talk about. I mean, it was not great. I don't recommend people to go see it in the theaters. If you want to watch it, it's worth a watch. I think my rating will reflect that. But I think wait until it's on streaming or rental or whatever or on HBO or TV or whatever. I don't think you should rush out and waste money in the theaters for no this. no and it's definitely not a family movie like i wouldn't i would have been severely upset if i took the kids to it because it's like they didn't need to see that first and the last like the the scenes would have been rough man um and i don't know if they would have caught it but they're getting better at picking up on the musical cues um from movies so it's like uh I don't, you know, it's not like when, when they're real young, things just, they're just kind of looking at what's, what's on the thing and not understanding everything. But now they're understanding everything. So it's like, hmm, they would have gotten that completely. Oh yeah. And I don't, I don't think it's a good way to start off a movie. I don't think it's a good way to start off a kid's movie, especially. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right, Mike, I don't know what else to talk about. I mean, I think I'm pretty much done. Okay. Well, this will be a short pod then, and that's fine. Well, we we haven't had one of those in a while anyway, right? And yeah, it, it, it's and, true. We're making yeah. up for too much time in the past. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, what are we going to see now, next week, man? It's, uh, oh, Furiosa, yeah? Yes, sir. Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Another summer blockbuster, Memorial Day weekend. It's the biggest film coming out. Yeah, man. I think I know what my tie-in is for that one, but you'll have to wait and see. Uh, Dude, it's a tough one, man. It's a very, very difficult one. Yes, 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 it is. Extremely difficult. So, yeah, I mean, no giveaways, no nothing. Um, Yeah, Furiosa, Mad Max Saga. We'll check it out next week. I'll probably go see it on Thursday. Probably be really tired by Monday, but hey, I don't know. We'll see. It'll be a fun weekend. Yeah, man. Well, uh, listeners, uh, thanks for listening, and make sure you enjoy your Memorial Day weekend coming up. And uh, we'll catch you on the next pod to talk about Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Is that what? Yeah, I don't know. That's the official title, Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Uh, I'm wondering if they're going to, you know, with the word saga, they're going to probably turn it into a trilogy, I would think, if it does well. I It looks pretty good to me. The trailers look really good. I love Anya Taylor-Joy. She's a very good actress. Of course, everybody loves Chris Hemsworth. You know, so I'm excited for this one, Mike. Maybe this one will earn another five reels, and it'll be another movie of the summer. I don't know. Right now... It's going to have to battle Fall Guy, and Fall Guy was pretty freaking incredible. Yeah, yeah, definitely have to see, man. And then, like, uh, last week you were showing me the new Crow movie, and so that that could be interesting. That's in August. So we'll see how this summer goes, man. It could be good, or it could be bad. We'll see. Definitely July is going to be tits. What do we got in July? I, I know there's a new um, Bad Boys movie, and I was very surprised about the last Bad Boys, which happened right before the pandemic. Remember we went and watched it, and I, I had a great time watching it. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, I don't know if Bad Boys is coming out in the summer, though. I would think it would. No, would it's be. coming out. It's, is it's it coming out in June. Okay. Yeah, like like soon. Oh, it's coming out in June? Oh, shit. They're not promoting it very well, because I just saw the trailer for the first time the other day. No, July, Mike, it's Deadpool Wolverine. Ah, yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. So at least we'll have some movies coming out. Deadpool, Wolverine, Bad Boys, Furiosa. We we got some stuff. I kind of want to go see that Strangers movie now, but I think we'll probably have to hold on to that one until uh, October. Yeah, we, we might have to. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'll write that down. 
Yeah, you might want to put that down. You know, we have that uh, that uh, uh, doc going on of uh, Harvest Horror Fest films. So, yeah, okay. dude, put that down for this year. That would be perfect. That'd be great. That would be perfect. I'll write that down. All right. Well, I guess with that, everybody, um, Matt, we need to get your rating. What is your rating? Oh, crap. We didn't do our ratings, did we? No. Dude, we almost ended the podcast without <laughs> doing our ratings. Holy shit. <sighs> Man, we does did. that tell you how la- how lacking of sleep I am even more than usual? I mean, for those of you who don't know, I'm going through a lot of personal shit the past three weeks, give or take. And normally I get five, six hours of sleep. I am lucky if I get two right now. And it's been like Oof. that for about two or three weeks. So I'm a fucking disaster. So I'm not going to go into it. I might go into it on the radio. I haven't decided yet. But anyways, Mike, uh, believe it or not, uh, I give it a little bit more than average just because... I liked that it was creative. I liked a lot of the things about it. I hated a lot of things. My mom gave a much lower rating than I did. No, actually, no, she didn't. I think she gives the same rating as I do. Shit, I don't remember now. Anyways, I give it a three and a half, which is probably way too much. Okay. Yeah, that that's way more than I th- I'm going to give it, Matt. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give uh, if uh, two and a half reels. It was just okay. Yeah, yeah. That's not That's not too much below me but i mean it is a full reel but my mom gave it three and a half and she really didn't like it and i'm like mom if you really didn't like it you need to rate it to where you don't really like it you don't give it like for me this is how i do it i don't know how you do yours mike but i equate it to like the the grades of school you know like a five is like an a plus plus and a four is a b and a three is a c and a two is a d and a one is an f and I thought it was just okay. So it's yeah. a C plus in my book. All right. All right. Makes sense, Matt. Makes sense. But my mom hated it. And I'm like, why did you give it an average rating then? Well, I don't know. I'm like, because you're too nice, Ma. So. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Now we're done. We give her ratings. Shit. I thought no. it was going to be quicker. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. All right. So I guess with that, everybody... Uh, we'll catch you on the next pod and make sure to follow us on the socials, uh, Twitter or X, Facebook or Meta and Instagram. Thanks for listening, everybody. Catch you on the next pod. Thank you for listening to the Real Film Nerds. Now don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now go out and catch a movie. Welcome, everyone, to Ma Hinshaw Loses Her Cookies, episode 64. The movie is If. Hi, Matt. Having a good evening, I hope. You know me, Ma. I'm living the dream. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Me, too. Well, folks, this movie is interesting, but if you have any children, uh, they should be older. This is not a movie for children. I feel, well, the characters are fun, and there's some funny lines, but basically it's for... Kids who are at least 12, maybe older. Um, It's just kind of uh, sad in a few spots. And, but it's, you know, um, it's got a good message. And Ryan Reynolds is just, he's fantastic as usual. But, um. It's not a real cheerful movie at times. And I don't know, did you have an imaginary friend, Matt? I didn't. I don't know. I was trying to think if I had one as a kid. I mean, I might have, but I don't know if it was really imaginary. I mean, I think probably Teddy Ruxpin. I talked to him a lot, but that was a toy. So, I mean, but he was imaginary, but kind of not imaginary. I don't know. 
that's what I was thinking is uh, I think, well, my kids probably had um, toys they talked to more than imaginary friend, but maybe that's a thing that kids do more nowadays, I guess. Um, I was really looking forward to, I loved the uh, blue character. Uh, Steve Carell was very good with him. He, he was really a silly goof. There were so many, and I know you know all the stars that were the different characters. I really didn't recognize voices terribly much. Uh, it was interesting. But I, I, I didn't know many kids who had imaginary friends, but maybe that's a new thing. I don't know. Uh, the um, set, I, I thought the feeling when uh, B or the actress's name was Callie, was with her grandma in this old um, New York walk-up, I guess you call them, apartment. Uh, that this it was really good. It uh, gave you the feeling of these old buildings. And the one thing that really came to mind for me was the uh, glass door handles, which I remember my grandmother had on her house when I was a kid. That means it was really old. But anyway, um, the sets were good. Um, the uh, carnival was very interesting and the house that the uh, imaginary critters were in was gave you the feeling of that being very old uh, but I thought there would be more laughter um, more fun and the whole thing about her dad uh, being in the hospital and she had to, she went and visit him every day and took him flowers and also kind of the fact that her mother had passed away that was very sad and um I don't know I, I think some kids would be quite bothered by it I don't know maybe and uh, so it wasn't as really, really funny as I thought it would be. Did you think it was? Honestly, they sold it as a kid's movie. They touted it as a kid's movie. And they didn't spend enough time on the kid things. I mean, the imaginary friends are fun, but there's too many of them. And there's too much going around them. And they're trying to tell the story instead of just, letting the kid like things in the film be kid like things. It was too, it was very serious film in my opinion, you know, compared to most animated kids films, I guess. I agree with that. I and you know, and then they, there was a little boy that was in the hospital with a broken arm and a broken leg. And, and he didn't pick out an imaginary friend I'm like, well, that's okay, I guess. I, I just, the whole thing to me was just not, I don't know, it didn't gel. I mean, I loved Ryan and Callie was good. And, you know, Steve was good as Blue, but but it, it wasn't uh, real fun to me. So uh, if you have, we had people bringing their five-year-olds seven-year-olds, and uh, they really got bored fast and started running around the theater and stuff. Uh, it really would not appeal to kids that young. So, uh, and I had to, a grandpa and grandma behind us, and the little boy just wasn't into it, and they left real early. So, uh, it's more of a older kid or adult's. Uh, in my view and that's about my outlook on it so um so do you think people should go to the theaters and watch it or no 
No, I don't. If you would like to watch it, I would say wait until it comes on a streaming service. I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about it. No. Was there I mean, any nudity? Not. not. Well, maybe the furry characters were nude, but that was it. No, there was no nudity that I noticed. And I usually look for that sort of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Which one was your favorite if? Oh, I I still think... Um, I think Blue was my favorite. I liked the B also, but I still think Blue was... What was your favorite? Oh, the ice cube. The, oh, really? The ice yeah, what was that? A glass of ice water or something? Yes, right? yeah. That's true. Because it was a kid from Arizona. Come on. Well, okay. I remember uh, that. They were like, worst, worst imaginary friend ever. He was just thirsty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that was, who was, oh, that was Bradley Cooper's voice. I mean, there was... There was moments of greatness in this film that they just did not capitalize on enough. Yeah. That's true. It just kind of went, you know, over your head kind of thing. I thought, yeah. And not over your head. There's just too much going on. And that's the stuff that was fun mm -hmm. and goofy and you really wanted more of and you just didn't get enough. That's true. In fact, you know, one thing I missed and it was even in the previews. What was the if that was the one that he said, put your pants on? I, I oh, that was the banana. That's what yeah, I that was thought. Voiced I by thought Bill Hader. Yeah. Banana, but I, I was like, are you, is he saying a banana should put his pants on? I thought I was. Well, it was a walking banana without pants on. It was creeping people out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That was funny. Yeah. That one was funny. But I kept saying, uh, a banana? What kind of pants would he put on? I mean, I, no, no, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> anyway. You're thinking oh. way too hard about this. Oh, I know. I know I am. So anyway, yeah, it was it was an okay movie, but I would wait till it enters your house somehow and uh, watch it then. I wouldn't bother going to the movies for it. So anyway, that's my view and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> All, All right, right so how many reels do you give uh, John Krasinski's if? Not reels, damn it, cookies. What kind of cookies? Are these imaginary cookies? Yeah, they're imaginary because I am imaginary because I haven't made cookies in a while. I'm thinking of making a red velvet cake, but I'm not going to make some cookies for a while because it's getting warm, you know, and baking, you know, well, you know well, how that goes when it's hot. You're going to anyway. have to make cookies because I'm going to have to bring some back to Lisa for the competition. Oh, gosh, my cookies aren't good enough, Matt. I can't do that. That's horrid. I would you? lose in a minute. Barry Barr's cookies are earth shaking. Mine are just cookies, you know. They're well, ordinary. Mom, you're not going to go up against Barry Barb. No. Who am I going up against? I don't know. Maybe, Maybe you'll I have to go up against them. So you're going to have to work on your cookies, Ma. Oh, I'm going to have to practice. That's true. Well, at least maybe the grandsons will like a cookie or two. I don't know. Anyway, I give it uh, three and a half cookies, which, you know, that's pretty nice, I say. But yeah, I think it's it's the same that I gave it, and I think you like the movie a lot less than I do. And Mike gave it two and a half, and I think you should have given it more of a two and a half or even a two. Ooh. Because well, you, I liked it better than you did. I liked it. It was okay. It just wasn't real great. You know, I just didn't ring my bell terribly. And I, I felt it was kind of sad for kids, you know. I mean, it ends. Well, I won't say it how it ends. But, you know, I thought it was kind of sad at times, you know. And the little girl by herself at her grandma's and stuff, you know. 
been there, done that. <laughs> Not too fun. But And one thing that got me was the fact that she'd go out at night and, you know, do all this stuff with If and Ryan and stuff. And she was only 12, for Pete's sake, in New York City. I, no way would I have let my grandchild do that. No, not a bit. Anyway. Yeah, that, that was probably not the smartest thing. No, no, it was not. And I don't know, maybe some, some of the parents will say, no, wait, just a minute. And I mean, the grandma didn't live on the bottom floor. This kid had to go up these stairs, you know, windy, windy and stuff. I would never have let her out at night to wander around and do stuff. Heck, no. Twelve is not grown up. And no. So anyway, three and a half. There you go. All right. Are you excited for next week's movie? Honestly, I hope I understand it. Um, I didn't really understand the original Mad Max. This is, and I don't know what I'm going to think about this one. Really? Are you excited? Well, yeah, of course it's Mad Max and it's the continuation of Fury Road, but it's a different so- saga, different story kind of thing, but it's tied to it. And I'm sure you don't even remember Fury Road, and that was not an original Mad Max. That was one from not that long ago, and it was not Mel Gibson. I don't remember it then. Just like I I predicted. I love, yeah, I love Mel Gibson, and he's probably too terribly old to be in this one. Kids that are listening, this is why you don't do drugs. Yeah, that's there you go. <laughs> you end up like Ma Hinshaw. I don't know what I'm gonna think of it or if I and if I, I'm and I'll be gutsy. If I don't understand any of it, I'll give it a two. <laughs> okay. Well go watch go watch Fury Road. I have it. Fury it's Road. It's everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. I'm I know you have seen it, Mom. It's the one with Mad Max, where it's all on like semi trucks and cars, and they're driving through the desert. My dream, just like my childhood, driving through the desert with a bunch of dust. Well, well okay. there's a lot of dust, and then there's crazy people on top of it, and dust storms, and ugh, guns, and ugh. fire, and. <laughs> oh, it Lord. sounds glorious. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm sorry. I'm trying, folks, but I'm not getting anywhere. It reminds me of my childhood and the dust storms and the hot boobs. Yuck. Well, anyway, I'm looking forward to watching dust. I absolutely am. So there, Fury Road, it's called. All right, yes. I'll have to go write that down so I don't forget. Which, if I remember it to write it down, will be good. Okay. Thank you. All right, so next week... Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Looking forward to it. I think it'll be fun. But uh, yeah, thank you everyone for tuning in to another mediocre. Ah, Hinchal loses their cookies, I guess. I mean, our podcast was kind of short, and then Mike and I kind of forgot to do our ratings, and so we came back and did it real quick. But yeah, it was not not the world's greatest film. Kind of disappointing, especially with the star power behind it. The stars in it, the stars writing it, the stars directing it. Yeah, uh, sorry, John Krasinski, man, you have done some great things, and this is not one of them. So, anyways, thanks again, everyone, for listening. We will chat with you next week. Bye.